Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It is a new edition of the 20 Minutes Podcast, and I'm not going to lie to you because, well, I have no reason to. Um, There are certain guests that I'll tell you I'm excited about talking to, and sometimes I am, and sometimes maybe not so much, but our guest this week is someone that it's crazy. I've known this young man since, I want to say his freshman or sophomore year at Morgan Park, and you know, this is someone that that I I, I tell everyone for many many years that I, I don't really openly root for specific schools or teams. Do I have my favorites? Yes, I live in Minooka School District. I let everyone know that they're my home team. Went to TF North. My dad went to Mount Carmel. So there's various connections to schools here. But as long as this guy is involved in high school football and coaching, I will always be a fan of his, and I will always be a fan of the school he's he's coaching for because, I mean, we got time. We got miles, this guy. And uh, someone who, and I wanted to do this without bringing him in because otherwise he gets too embarrassed and he'll crack a joke and he won't take it it's serious, which, is, you know me, it's never really that serious. But uh, Chris James from Morgan Park is someone that, uh, I'm very close with, and I'm glad that I am, and I've gotten to know him for a long time. And and he's someone you, you see the work that he's done since he's been at Morgan Park. And am I surprised? No, not really, because when I met this kid as a sophomore in high school, I just knew there was something there. Now I don't know. I didn't know exactly what that something was, and it could have been many different things. I'll bring him in now. He's probably <laughs> laughing, but but I knew there was something there. And I knew he had something special inside of him. I didn't know exactly what it was, but, you know, every once in a while, you know, the sun will shine on a dog's butt and (laughs) it must have when it comes to Chris James, because Chris Chris, o'clock is right twice a day. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, but, you know, and I've told you this and I want to tell you. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. We do got years. That's crazy. I am so proud of you, and, and and it goes beyond the coaching and, you know, you being a father and a family man and, and how your life is developed. Let's face it, we didn't we didn't know if you'd get there or not. I mean, no, we definitely did. No. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely did. No. We, we there, there were a few years there that we kind of just watched from a distance. But, uh, no, all kidding aside, um, first of all, I want to congratulate you on, oh, man, just – just thriving and and believe me chris you know we can get into this whole backstory and you can you can do some searches on chris and there's a couple of good stories that were written earlier in his career that detail his background and when he came up and you know again i i kind of had a front row seat to that pretty early on and you know just the fact that chris you've overcome a lot you you, you've never let that hinder you you've used it to motivate yourself you talk the talk you walk the walk and and now you're giving back and you're giving back to your old high school and just incredibly proud of you, my man. Yeah, thanks, big guy. Yeah, I, and then, I didn't know you felt that way. <laughs> now you do. No, I appreciate everything, man. I think you've been knowing me since my sophomore year. And I remember when Coach Burr, like introduced me to you and he was like, uh, stand up straight. He's <laughs> I was like, okay. You're like, who's this goofy <laughs> ass white guy? I, who's this clown? <laughs> no, I did whatever <laughs> Coach Burr, like told me to do. And so, uh, and then it was at that moment, I was like, wait, I'm talking to Edgy Tim. I'm, I must, I might be a good player. And then Kirk was like, go to class. <laughs> yeah. um, let's, let's start with Lexi. I mean, there's yeah. a guy, you know, that, and I've said this before, guys that were so instrumental to me. I mean, you obviously, but yeah. even for me early on, I mean, you know, Lexi welcomed me in to that overcrowded, no weight room office. Let me in. Remember watching, watching, physically watching tape, VHS and beta, whatever the hell it was back then. VHS. And and you guys coming in and out of his office all day long. And, you know, uh, you know. Coach Brookshire and, and and all the rest of the assistants and that staff and those guys were so incredibly welcoming to me. They didn't need to be, but he was. And you know, to this day, and I, I've told I told him several times that that I could I could just never be thankful enough. Talk about the impact he's had on your life and really your career and where you're at now. 
Um, he was tremendous. The first thing he did, he made it mandatory for me to run track because I was slow. <laughs> <laughs> like we went there and uh, Coach Spurlock thing. I hate that I'm using this phrase, especially in today's time. Like Morgan Park wasn't a democracy; it was a it was a dictatorship. Yeah, <laughs> you were gonna yeah. do what Coach Spurlock said, and you weren't gonna play, or you weren't gonna play football. I just think that was like. You know, you do what you're supposed to do, no matter how you're feeling, no matter what's going on. And coach was – that was coach, though. Like, he was no yeah. nonsense. He was – you know, we had history lesson for an hour after every practice. Um, you had to have a book bag on every single day. Like, you couldn't wear earrings. To this day, my ears are still not pierced. <laughs> it's just something that I, I – Yeah, I know. I know. It was a huge rule. And, his, and now that I'm a coach now, I understand. He's like, hey, if I can't trust you and I'm not around you – then I can't trust you on a football yeah. field. And so I think yeah. a lot of his teachings for football, it's just the, like how to be a young man, how to be a man and, and have a navigate your way and that you just got to work hard no matter what. But uh, it's still crazy that my ears ain't pierced, but he was a uh, coach was coach was a man's man. Like that, if I could yeah. describe him anyway. And I remember I called him and I asked him like, uh, you know, I asked him a question and I was like, uh, Hey coach, you mind if I do this? You know, he was like, man, you're the head coach. He was like, I wouldn't do that, but God damn it, do it your way. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, a, he, was a, he was a man's man. He was a strong man. And, and everything he, he taught us was about, you know, being a great example and don't turn the lights out on the program and, <clears throat> and just be a man and stand on top of that. So I, I appreciate him so much with, you know, everything that he did for me and my story and, you know, how he let me play quarterback. He let me play receiver. Um and yeah. just everything he taught me and in the recruiting process, like you were there, you know, he wanted all yeah. of us to be recruited and he wanted all of us to have good grades. We all sit down and did our tape in his office with the two, the dual set, the, set, <laughs> the game tape in, you put yep. the other tape in, you hit record. Yep. You know, it makes me feel old. The kids are looking at me like VHS tape. Bro. I'm like, <laughs> man. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine now? I don't think there'll ever be a highlight tape ever made. In a funny story, right? Vontae Davis recorded over my highlight tape in speech comm class my freshman year at the University of Illinois. He took my tape out of the dorm and <laughs> recorded his speech over it for speech comm one-on-one. Oh, uh, man. I'll never forget Vontae for that. Uh, so, so obviously, uh, you, you get your, you did graduate Morgan Park, right? I just, I had that yeah. just to add, just to make sure. <laughs> I think the clearinghouse said I graduated. <laughs> sure, that's what counts. So, yeah. So, so you get out of Morgan Park, you head down to the University of Illinois, and I know obviously that Illinois had a huge impact on you and your development oh, yeah. there as well. I mean, I, I imagine you look back and you got some pretty fond memories of Illinois as well. Oh, yeah. Anything stick out in particular about your years at Illinois? I mean, you gotta you gotta talk about some of your, I mean, just your teammates alone. You had some yeah, my teammates, Coach Zook, Coach Zook put together like Coach Zook can recruit and evaluate, like a yep. guy like John Asamoa. Um, Coming from Richie's high school, he was in my class. A guy like Jeff Allen. I'm just talking about the guys that, you know, weren't highly recruited, that end up being like second and third round draft pick, that end up being yeah. like Big Ten players. But then on top of that, being able to, you know, get some really talented guys to stay in state um, and going down to Florida and Ohio and getting some guys. I remember Regis Ben was one of the best players that – one of the most physically gifted people yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, he was the best. He was the number one rated receiver in the country. He came to – he came to Illinois in the same year, you know, Joe Morgan came and he broke all of Jesse Owens track records in Ohio and they could recruit and evaluate. And coach Zook used to always talk about one thing I, that sticks with me now and I'm in Morgan Park is people make a place like, you know, the place could look however it wants to, the people make the place. But the biggest thing that sticks up out for me about Illinois is the fact that, okay, I came in, I started as a true freshman. I was a four-star recruit. All of these things. I walk in the door with juice Williams and I got hurt my sophomore year. Yeah. Um, and I ended up just being a role player uh, and doing my job and, and doing my best to be a leader um, and blocking and clearing, running clear out routes. And now when I go back to that school, those people treat me the same. They don't treat me like they treat me like, hey, you were a great player and you did these things here. And I was like, I yep. blocked. <laughs> <laughs> and I blocked and I got my degree. And then and, and they make you feel like family. That's the one thing that I that I would say about that place is. You know, no matter what you did or what your role was on the team, yeah, like guys like Juice Williams, yeah, Juice Williams is 
and Illinois all time great and all of that. But when I go yeah. down, like the people show me the same love and gratitude that they show him. And when, you know, I have my foundation and say, Hey, I'm an Illinois grad and people rally behind that. So yeah, yeah sorry that I got hurt, but you know, not really just because of the love and the connections that I made, you know, it didn't matter. Um, whether or not I was Regis Ben or I was Chris James, you know, the yep. people remember me for that. So, and that goes back to the, when people make a place, Cassie Arner is the uh, head of marketing uh, yep. down there for the sports teams. And she came back and she's, she, then she was a sports information director. And like, she's like my aunt. Yeah. <laughs> got a great yep. relationship. Yep. Trent Chestnut was the, the, the equipment manager down there. He's somebody like that's a good friend of mine. Um, and just all those connections. Terry Airmore is the uh, person over recreation. Um, I did my internship with him and I have a great relationship with him. So uh, that's that's my biggest takeaway uh, from there. Not not even the playing part, just the people, the people and how they've helped me up until this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned your foundation. Uh, we have to talk about the Hero Foundation, which obviously was a big part of. I, I guess we'll call it I, I guess we'll call it your early beginnings out of college. I know that was one of the first things you kind of got involved with. And you actually I, did that for me. It's crazy. I know you probably don't know this story, but this is a long time ago, right? So we're talking All about right. We got time. We got hero, right? So uh, <laughs> you introduced me to Paul Chesney from Core 6. Yes. And then I was like, hey, like, you was like, hey, Chris is a good guy. You know, me and Paul, me and Paul had a great relationship. Um, he gave me, a, like, a great start where I got a chance to meet some, like, super talented kids and be a part of that organization. And I remember at that time you was like, just do what you're best at. Like, just do what you're good at. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I remember being Paul just training kids, and I loved it. Like, I loved mentoring kids. I loved working yep. with them from a Flynn Nagel to a Laquan Treadwell, uh, Lance Lenore, Jawan Wesley, all those guys, Clifton Gear. We had some guys in that group. And over time, yep. and but then I knew that I was an academic casualty, <laughs> that I had to get certain grades in order to qualify. So I wanted right. to do that, you know, and talk to the kids about, like, hey, like, I qualified at the last possible minute, and I wanted to help them. And so, but the kids were at 707 where we were just starting it. And uh, I see how passionate the kids were about playing. So I was like, hey, I could use this as an incentive to get them to do well in the classroom. And that's how Hero started, because Edgy told me, do what you're good at. <laughs> and I did it. Like, and it ended up being a good thing. Um, ended up being, for, for, for me, it ended up being a great thing. Yeah. Like, um, it gave me my start. It helped me, you know, the one thing as a football player, when you go from playing, is you got to reinvent yourself. You know, yeah. when you go through that phase yeah. of how do I reinvent myself? Who is the person I've become? I was a player and everybody knew me as a player. But now who am I now that I'm done playing? Right. Um, and I loved it, man. We we helped a lot of kids. We put a lot of kids on the road. We helped a lot of kids get scholarships. I'm seeing kids graduate. I'm getting referrals for jobs now. So it was cool, man. It's just it's just different. You told me a long time ago. though. <laughs> He was like, you're not going to be able to do Hero for free ever. And I was like, yes, I am. Well, you did, you did for a while. I did for a while. And it longer just than I thought. Man. It just got expensive. And we, we started yeah. to charge the kids a fee to help. Um, and we, we we tailored back this year just because it needs to be free again. Like, it right. honestly, just it needs to be free again. Kids don't need to worry about paying. But that takes time. A lot of my teammates that I played with – uh, they retired. It was like, hey, I, I can't give that donation no more. Yeah, the money that that extra money isn't quite there like it used to be. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. And you told me, you told me, and then I had to learn the hard way, just like any other kid that you have. Um, and so now I'm, I, I realize seven on seven is not what the kids need. Uh, it's a part of what they can use, but right. it's not a priority. The kids need yep. consistent training and and just support in in every different way every day. So I'm working really hard to try to put a facility together so kids can walk to, especially in a place like Chicago, it's still the same things, so all the challenges and whatnot. But, you know, my focus kind of changed when I got Morgan Park. My focus like changed a lot with Morgan Park. Yeah. So, so, so you might, you may think everyone out there might have a side hustle. This dude's got the side hustle and, and he's <laughs> always had side hustles. So man, always, <laughs> always, always. But again, just amazing what you've been able to accomplish through hero foundation then you decide to go the high school route. And then you end up going back to your alma mater, which mm -hmm. again, tremendous, tremendous hire. Um, did they Morgan Park really know what they were getting you or no? I don't even think I even. I knew. don't think I don't think anyone did. I don't even think I knew. Like I, I just, I was green. I didn't yeah. know any better. 
And I just started doing stuff. <laughs> like I just started doing stuff. And and it was crazy is uh, I've learned so much along the way. Like that was my first time really coaching high school football. Right. Places. Right. Like, I got a chance to get my feet wet a little bit when I first got out of college, but like I just got thrown into being a high school football head coach. Yeah. Um, is you know what I like to call it is a child and family psychiatrist. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Which is, um, and you know, and I got in, and because I love that place, that place, like, that place did a, a lot for me. Like, the people in that place did so much for me. Yeah. And so I was so passionate about making it that again, making it that place where kids, like, hey, I'm gonna use football to, you know, do this. And, and I didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> I literally did not know what I was getting myself into. But what, what kind of to this day still blows me away. And, Again, as someone that has been in public league high schools and, and seen facilities or lack of facilities, whatever you want to call it, and obviously things have gotten better since yeah. back when you were there. There's certainly been some improvements, but still obviously still way behind compared to a lot of the suburban programs. Yeah. But you just – I, don't, I never knew you knew how to build like arcs and stuff. I mean, <laughs> all, all of a sudden you're building a locker room, you're building training tables, you're building weight yeah. room. Yeah, it was. Where did it, that come from? Uh, we needed it. Oh no, I know. <laughs> we needed it, I know. Man. And, and from a football coach's perspective, if the first thing that we did was the weight room, you like, had hey, to. We have to. When I got back to Morgan Park in 2018, it was the same cage, right? From when I was there. Well, and I tell I tell people the story all the time. I'd go up and see Lexi, and he go, Well, get a chair. And he goes, Well, go go in the weight room and get it. And I go in the weight room and get it. And there's like two benches and about three racks of weights at the most. Yeah, at the most. And half the time you had to drain the drain drag the bench out into the hallway so you had room. So we had room to lift. That yeah. was a weight room. That was it. In 2018, when I got back from when I graduated in 2006. It was the same thing. Like it was the same equipment. It was the same stuff. And uh, God, but Jerron Fields and Cam Buckner helped me out. Uh, yeah. State legislator Cam Buckner helped me out um, for us to be able to. And I was like, hey, if we don't have this, like we can't get better. Like we can't get better. Uh, there's no way in hell I could, <laughs> I could yeah. win with this. Yeah. And he came in and my daughter was like, daddy, we should paint ourselves. She was with me and the guy said the number to paint. I was like, we ain't got that. <laughs> so a lot of stuff just started just like, we don't have that. And we had to do it. And our locker room was in the hallway. It was right. was our locker room right. was in the hallway. We got dressed in the hallway. So I turned the cage into a locker room. Um, and I just started building. I just started teaching myself. Um, and now I got all types of tools. And my wife was like, oh, you know how to do that. <laughs> so do this. <laughs> and so it just started out of necessity. What's kind of been um, the revelation for me this year has been the last two years we've lost in the third round of state playoffs. Um, yep. And before that, what I realized is that all the games that we lost in, we were the less physical football team. So I know that we had to develop, you know, a certain attitude and a certain type of physicality in order to play against, you know, the elite football schools in the state. Right. Of well, Florida. look at, look at, look at who you lost to. Yeah. Two, 22, yeah. 22, you lost, you lost to, uh, what was it? Nazareth, Nazareth. right? St. Francis um, last year. St. Francis last year. And then we lost to Mount Carmel at the beginning of the year, which was a good game for us. It was a huge right. match. Thick. Um, but I started to notice what's showing. And, and it's, it's so – it's the same thing. What started to show up is the resources gap. In the third round, like, they got the technology on the sideline. We yeah. don't have it. You know, but the biggest thing this offseason that we've done, um, that we're doing – um, is I want to close that gap. So I haven't even really done football. I've just been doing a, a ton of fundraising and building. Um, we've been practicing. We practiced for five months going into the St. Francis game. And the entire time, we don't have a trainer. We don't have an ice machine. Over 60% of the times that practice, we just didn't have water. Um, yeah. There's no way I can ask the kids to play at that level for that long with that level of physicality. So we've been on a mission to close that gap. Um, and get the funding necessary for us to build a training room and for us to have the resources and ice machine and the technology to close that gap. Because everybody knows, like, hey, city schools are talented. You look at Morgan Park, you say that they're talented, you know, but my kids go to the gas station and buy snacks and chips. Right. You don't know. <laughs> right. People don't realize people don't realize in particular what those kids have to deal with and overcome when they're not with you. 
Yeah, yeah. And it, and it's tough, man. And and that's a big part of the reason why we built all the stuff that we built. Like, okay, Market Park is is weird in how it's built. And I and, and I this is Coach Spurlock doing like we have a whole wing of the building that's the football hallway. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. our just yeah. right. Right. Um those kids don't have to leave. In the summertime, my kids are probably at the school from seven to seven. Um and they're just having fun. They're playing basketball. They're in the pool. Yep. We have practice. They're in the locker room. They're playing video games. Those things are kind of like a necessity for us to build camaraderie um, and create a safe space for the kids at the school. Um, our new principal, Daniel Kuzma, is awesome. It's awesome. He is. He is absolutely great. And uh, he kind of allows me to be, you know, a passionate alumni uh, with the school. And uh, me and him got a great – me and him have an amazing relationship. So that's how we started building stuff It's just – we needed them and we couldn't afford it. And so it's like, yeah. I'll call the kids, let's clean, let's paint, you know, and, and we built the training. We built a couple training tables. Yep. And in the meantime, I've been able to teach the, the kids a lot of cool stuff with carpentry. And we've been learning along the way. We've made some mistakes, <laughs> broke some things, but it's all worked out. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, what do you want to do next? What's on the, what's on the check mark list? as far as maybe a project. Now, what people also need to understand, which we didn't even touch on, you have a brand new field. Yeah, man. We, uh, thanks to some some great people and some great lobbying. Uh, we got a brand new football turf field. We used to have a field with dirts, rocks, and oh, glass. Bricks, rocks, pipes. Uh, we we it. Some of the, and we practiced on it. And we were good on it. And yep. we practiced on that field for forever but uh, it was time for a change like we didn't have lines on the field and that right a part in us playing it was blood real bad yeah yeah yep so um uh, we were the state gave us some funding uh for us to be able to do that and also to take some care of some stuff in our building our building was built in 1916 so right. it needed support too yep. and that's a big thing like i love coaching football but the kids go to school for seven hours out of the day. So yeah. that's the most important thing. And it's it's a source of pride too. Your facility, yeah, your, your locker room, your new field, everything. Those, you know how I mean I, I talk to your kids all the time. Oh yeah. Those kids talk about. I remember mean, we're ta talking to Tyshawn Griffin about just, oh, just walking out of the building and walking to the field and like this is unreal. I mean it was unreal. like for me, going onto the field was like that like wow. It's like a dream. And then, like, now we got freshmen and sophomores. They have no idea. Right. What we're yeah, doing. this has always been here. Yeah. And I turned, it, I turned it to the old coach. Like, God damn it, you got to appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it used to look like this. Let me show you the pictures. And and Ty, when Ty then was there, they was like, yo, it didn't always look like oh. this. <laughs> so, no, that's been, it's been cool, man. They, they love it. It's, it's, been, it's been a great – it's been a great experience to see, like, the kids have come to know how they've gone from appreciation to entitlement <laughs> and you know, um, keep them grounded, but also like allowing them to have the expectation. Like, yo, we deserve this type of stuff. Yeah. It's a baseline that we should have. So I'm, right. I'm, I'm okay with both. <laughs> um, I mean, again, you mentioned, you know, two back to back, get to the quarters, both years, both straight back to back, get eliminated by Catholic schools. You've made a lot of progress so far in the program. Yeah. I know you, you don't look back probably very often, but you really have made, I think a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. How do you get to that next step? Is it just continuing building and continuing adding to what you have and, and obviously bringing your kids up and I mean, kind of what's that next step going to be? I, I think it's for us is just closing that gap. Like we got to close that gap on resources when you resources, when you get to that round, because that's the difference, right? Like, okay. We played a team like St. Francis, who we felt like, okay, matched our talent and, and we're even. But now they have, you know, they're reviewing the, the, the game, the play, the last series on the sideline, and they can make those corrections instantly. Uh, like we had a helmet issue and we end up having. Chris. Chris? Team coming back. We got a uh, extremely talented team coming back. Yeah, let's let's I want to stop I want to stop you there and I apologize. We we kind of I kind of had a blip of the Wi-Fi there just for mm -hmm. a second. So I might have lost about 15 seconds of your talk. Um 
2024, let's talk about it a little bit. You mentioned some of the talent. Um, talk about a handful of maybe those key kids that, that we need to kind of keep an eye on for. Start start with your quarterback. Chris? Chris, you there? All right, we're back. Sorry about that. And and Chris, sorry, that's wonderful technology bombing out on us is is sometimes unfortunately happens. Before before I cut you loose and again, I love having you. Glad you joined us. 2024. Um, you know, obviously you you had a handful of kids. Big time impact players. I'm thinking of Chris Doerr. I'm 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 thinking of Tyshawn Griffin that gra- that have graduated, have graduated. You still got a nice group coming back. Talk about this 24 team and maybe some kids and some key key names we need to know. I'm I'm excited about the 25 group, the the, the class of 2025 for this 24 season. Um, just because they they have full four years of development, like Griffin and Durr went through the COVID year with their freshman year. So they missed yep. out on the year of development and they end up being good. And with them being good, we were able to get, uh, we, were, we were able to, you know, we got a great group coming back. We graduated, we bring back 16 starters. Um, so I'm excited to see like what they do and some of the young guys that we got in the program. Um, last year we were fast. Like last year we were fast. We were small. Yeah. <laughs> we were small. We could roll, but we were little. Um, man, we're not so small anymore. <laughs> um, we got some guys coming back. Like, I mean, the, the group, it's a, probably about a group of like eight kids that are four year varsity starters. Uh, with Jovan Clark, Amar Grayer, uh, Jamari Washington is going to be a three year varsity starter. He's like extremely gifted and talented. Yeah. Um, Jovan is as well. Um, up front, up front, if I'm not mistaken, right? Offensive and defensive lines, you got a lot of starters back up front. Everybody comes back. We lost one starter on the defensive line, one starter on the offensive line. We put those guys back in the weight room, and they have been at it. And they heard they heard all the small comments from <laughs> not only from the outside, they heard them from me oh, too. Yeah. And like oh, yeah. we got them eating good and doing what they're supposed to do. And we got some young guys that are that are on the bigger side that have, you know, committed themselves to the weight room and they're gonna be good. We're gonna be really fast again. Um, we got some young guys, a young guy by the name of uh, James Bell. He's going to be a sophomore. He would actually play varsity last year, but he broke his collarbone in the summer. Um, Will Smith, Kendall Griffin, uh, got a backer that was, uh, he transferred over late, uh, came back to the school in the middle of the year. Uh, Demetrius Rue, Demetrius is about 6'1", 227. He's going to be a big time player. Um, got him developed. He was banged up last year. We get some guys back. We, we got, we got some, some, some dudes yeah. that um, play and then uh, one other kid. Uh, you know, with the things happen in the city of Chicago, like transfers is weird. Um, <laughs> we got a couple kids that transferred in, but they just live in our neighborhood. Uh, that's really the truth of what this is. Um, and I think that we built the program up in a way where kids will say, Hey, I don't mind going to my neighborhood school. Yeah, you know, Catholic school is yeah. an option. You know, they recruited me out of grade school, but my my high school is a, is a good environment. Our suspension numbers are down. Um, our culture is better. Our rating at our school is getting better. The perception of our school and the city yep. schools is changing. Dude. So kids are like, or parents are like, hey, I'll go back to that school. I'll go back to my public school where I paid my property taxes at. So yep. we got a few kids that have walked, just walked into the building and um, and done it. It's, it's always like a weird thing, especially with, you know, how the city is. And, you know, it can be a dirty game at some times and you don't know who's playing fair and who's not. Um, I know that we're playing fair, so it's going to be fun. I think this is the, the the group last year was talented. I I owe Tyshawn Griffin and Chris Durr a lot. I'll, I'll yep. say that I do. Yep. But yeah, this is probably the most talented team that we've had. Uh, and and of, and of course, you you start off with two soft, softball cupcake teams in a uh, little <laughs> school called Marist and then Oak Park River Forest to start the season. Oh yeah. Um, you don't play around when it comes to non-conference. Why? Um, I hear the – you hear all the stuff that Catholic schools have, the advantage and all of that. Um, 
True or not, I don't care. I want to play the best. <laughs> like, yeah. You yeah. say the Catholic schools are the best. It is what it is. Chicago has 2.4 million people in it. Uh, a kid that lives in the city of Chicago can go to Morgan Park from his eighth grade. He can apply to go to Morgan Park School. You just got to work hard and make your school a choice where people want to come go to school, learn, and play sports. Yeah. Uh, but we always want to play those. We always – I, I want to play a CCL team every single year. Every single year. If that's what – you know, the football people say, oh, that's the best football and that's the best competition, then sign us up. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, and and for us, when we get to the state playoffs, we're going to play uh, a Catholic school opponent and we're going to play a suburban school that's really good. So in the preseason, we'll always go on the road and, and play just because you want to get the kids, especially the, the Chicago public school kids, you want to get them used to playing in that environment. And with my experience group, they're used to playing in that environment. What one other thing I want to ask you real quick. What in your opinion has been the biggest win so far for you? Because there's been a couple in the playoffs that have been really interesting. Sycamore, kinda, was, yeah, Sycamore is my yeah. biggest win. Sycamore, yeah. Sycamore and Peoria. Sycamore and oh, Peoria. Um, those are the two. Those are the two I thought of. And yeah, and for yeah. my Sycamore money, was, was was CPS was 0-22. And at halftime, we're down 18-7 to a really good opponent. A really, really good opponent. I can't say that enough. Like, they're making it to the quarterfinals and the semifinals every year. Sycamore is Sycamore is is good. They're consistent. They got good coaches. They got good kids. They got tradition. And you're down 18-7, and everybody's saying, like, hey, (laughs) CPS needs to win a game. Well, and and here, Chris, early in the year, they played Simeon. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and, and they they did to Simeon what they probably were going to try to do to you. Yeah. They got up and they just held the ball and just kept it away from Simeon. And that was and, the and, crazy thing about it. We had the ball two times in the first half. We had seven points. Yeah, and I was just like as, as I see what they do, it's working. And what we gave me confidence is, is I went into the locker room and I see the kids' faces, and they were just like. Okay, let's play. <laughs> like, like, let's play. And they weren't phased. Like, and I was just like, okay, it's yeah. what happened. Having an experienced group, but the Sycamore win is one that, you know, the Sycamore win and playing at Mount Carmel, and when everybody yep. is like, oh, they 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 go beat you, St. Louis. You yeah. know, that was like a big thing. Like, even even I'll, I'll give my opinion on it. Like, to see them go beat East St. Louis the way that they did, you know, and then East St. Louis go have the year that they had. Said a lot about yep. Mount Carmel. Like, you know, yep. we could say a lot about that. That was a huge game for us to play the way that we did. And we were down 22 to nothing at halftime. And we ended up losing the game 22 to uh, 22 to 12, 22 to 14, something like that. Just the way that we played, you know, there's no moral victories. But I was just I was so happy with how my kids played. But the Sycamore game was it was a physical. And that was another reason, like the training room was so important. If you're going to play Sycamore, you better yeah, have banged up after the game. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. You better have everything you need. And uh, and I respect Coach a lot, like, you know, a, a ton. Those guys the, those guys play football, like, the right way. Um, but to be yeah. at home, to be at Gately, to be down at 18-7. And Gately, Gately isn't a friendly place for the home team. <laughs> no. No. Gately isn't always a friendly place for the home team. But that one and going, you know, beating Peoria down in Peoria was big and, and, and playing yep. uh, Fenwick. I think, but. Sycamore and Peoria were, yeah, that was, those were, those were yep. good. Ones. Those were good ones. Yeah, there's no doubt. Dude, you're the best, man. Great to yeah, have you. Best, I, 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 I feel good to talk to you, man. You, 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 you teach me every time I, every time I have a chance to have a conversation with you. So you're still um, kicking, you're still 25. You're still hitting the recruiting trail. So what's it, what's it, what's it like for you these days, man? What's going on with you? Just keep fighting a good fight, my friend. It, man, it, please it, keep fighting a good fight, man. We, <laughs> we, people, we ask, people ask me all the time, you know, when when are you going to step aside? I said, I'm never stepping aside. I know. You never. told me. You told me. Never. Why? I still have fun. Yeah, that's good, man. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a really good year. I think so, too. All right, my friend. I will let you go. But, again, appreciate you so much and so proud of what you've accomplished and Looking forward to uh, seeing even bigger and better. And, man, I'm telling you, one of those days I'm going to be there. I'm going to be covering that game. 
And I can't oh, wait to see you holding that state title trophy because man, it's, it's going to be a emotional it's, day when that happens. You'll have to hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. I appreciate you, big guy. All right. Have a good one.